You know, the conversation sometimes reminds me of that remarkable bestseller, which is men are from Mars and women are from Venus. <laughs> it's like we're living in parallel universes. <laughs> you know, because I, I, I agree with some fundamentals. Data should drive our conversation. And we need to make some very tough choices. And that we are living in a world that's radically different from that 20 years ago when we had democracy. But, you know, I sit on the board of the Moe Bryan Foundation. For 13 years, we have consolidated information to give you a snapshot of the real Africa. And in the real Africa today, a billion people live. Half of them are under 19. And the average age of our head of state is probably between 60 and 70, with our next door neighbor starting his seventh term at 90. <laughs> now, you know, I have my son here, you know, and if I wanted Chain, sort out the technology at home, I have to ask him. Now, I don't know how at 90 you can try and do that in a world that has fundamentally changed how we organize our lives, how we get our information, what the nature of work is, uh, you know, and how do we access information. You know, so I think that there's a reality check we need. But what is the population in 2050? It's 2 billion people in Africa. Half that population in seven countries. By 2035, we have a bigger workforce than that of China or India. By the end of the century, half the young people in the world live in Africa. Well, let's look at the reality today. You know, uh, what is that reality? The reality is the bulk of them have very little education, very few skills, no jobs, unlikely to have a job in their lifetime. That's the reality of the Africa I meet and encounter, where 240 million people are malnourished, where two out of every five children are stunted. This means irreparably and irreversibly damaged, both physically and mentally. And we're living in an age where there's a technology revolution. We're talking about knowledge economies. We're tying our kids' hands behind their backs. And that includes South Africa. And so the, we have to make some tough choices because that's a demographic dividend that faces us. As what was said earlier, the rest of the world is aging. They're geriatrics. We have the youngest population. But we're going to see our people as the real and most important resource. But the reality is that 60% of those people that are living in cities today, which is the fastest urbanizing population in the world, Africa, are living in slums. Have you been in slums? This is the parallel universes. I was here last week. I went to Pakistan. I walked in the <laughs> There was there. And the raw sewage. Would you go and live there? Have you ever been there? That's the real world. And that's where the bulk of people are living. Mm. So what we've got to do is understand what their aspirations are. What is their conversation? It's completely different to the, to the rose tinted glasses we want to put on this. It's a dividend. It's a positive. How do we harness that? Now let's look at the strengths of Africa, which are including the strengths of South Africa. We have one third of the mineral wealth of the world. We fuel that global economy. We have 20% of the land service, 15% of the global forest, 60% of the arable land. The tough decisions we need today is not about the growth, successful growth story that we talk about, because in the places I go, the people don't see that growth. They don't experience that growth. They don't see any hope for them sharing in that growth. And that's the time bomb we're sitting on. There are three violent service delivery projects every day in this country. That's the reality. You think these, this bubble we live in here in Santon will survive? That's the reality we have to conclude. How do we leverage the assets we have, put our people's needs in the center of that, and make the tough choices? And I think those tough choices are from government, they're from civil society, they're from the trade unions, they're from us as citizens. And I think that's the conversation we start to, got to set up. Because two weeks ago, we were in Addis, at the African Union headquarters, with 500 people from across Africa, most of them young. You know what their conversation is? We're sick and tired of talk and talk and talk. We need time frames. We need accountability. We need transparency. We need decisions that put the needs of the future, which are the young people, at the center. That's the conversation we're going to have. And I think that's what we're trying to avoid. And I'm tired of these conferences and dialogues and, and 
damn green papers and white papers. We need accountability now. Let's start having the real conversation about what needs to happen in this country.